The good news, this shoe has a thick stack at 33 millimeters in the heel and 29 millimeters in the forefoot. I found them to be decently cushioned on trail over the 40 miles I hiked in them. The bad news, they have no built-in stability system. Your foot is elevated on a platform with no additional stability. I found them to be unstable on technical terrain. On occasion, my foot felt like it was sliding off the side of the shoe. Hello, Alan here with Dusty Hikers. I go on hiking adventures and test some of the best hiking shoes on the planet. First, let's talk about comfort. They have an excellent EVA midsole that provides a lot of cushion in the hiking that I did these shoes are very comfortable to hike in another thing I really love about the shoe is the double jackered synthetic mesh upper which is slightly stretchy so that you don't get that wrinkling or buckling in the front of the foot when you cinch the laces down I love that feature it also has a slightly rockered sole design so you can see here the heel kind of comes up at the back this was amazing for downhilling you can put a lot of your weight on the heel and it with the cushion the 33 millimeter stack it does a lot of work for you one thing on comfort that i didn't like was that it has a slightly tapered toe so on some downhill my toe my foot would slide to the front and i would get a little bit of pinching on my toes i recently did a through hike the last day was 25 miles i hiked in two other shoes up until about mile 15 and then i did the last 10 miles in these shoes and they performed very well for comfort um, I had almost zero issues. I got a slight blister on my pinky toe, but that was pro probably because it was wet. I did big miles that day and I was going pretty fast. The Hocus Pigot 5 are essentially running shoes with some trail shoe DNA built into them. Of the three shoes that I tested, I did find a better trail running shoe for hiking. If you want to figure out which shoe that is, go check out my video called Best Trail Running Shoes for Hiking and you can find it on my channel. So next up for stability, I don't want you to come away from this video thinking these shoes are inherently unstable because they're not. I I hiked 85 miles with three different shoes, swapping them out every five or to six miles every day. And these shoes performed very well for stability. It was just, again, in certain technical sort of rocky terrain, especially downhill. I felt like my foot was not as stable because of this big stack and also because of the fact that there's no stability feature designed into the shoe. So on some downhill, again, on rocky terrain, I felt like my foot was sort of sliding off the top of the stack, which for me is kind of a showstopper. So if you're going to go hiking um, and you want a trail running shoe, again, go check out that video because that shoe that I chose to be the best trail runner for hiking is, I think, better than these if you're going to go hiking and especially backpacking. All in all for stability over the 85 miles that I hiked I really did not have any major issues with these. Hoka's are very popular for a reason. I saw a lot of Hoka on trail among all the other people that were doing this through hike. So all in all for stability they're okay but there is a better shoe out there. I love going hiking, testing footwear, and then making videos about that. If you want to support me you could go and purchase this shoe in the link or really any other shoe. It doesn't cost you any more money. It gives me a few dollars and then I can apply that money to buy buying more hiking shoes and doing more reviews for you. Also, if you're finding something useful in this video, give it a like. Next up is traction. Mega grip plus five millimeter lugs is basically a win on any day. I hiked in grass, asphalt, stone, gravel, loose rock, mud, and everything in between. And I never had any issues with these shoes for traction. The mega grip compound, I've tested it in the past and it is in my estimation, probably the best rubber compound for grip. It's called mega grip for a reason. So the Hoka Speed Goat 5 feature that. And so if traction is your thing, these shoes are definitely gonna fit the bill. I also do head to head testing for traction. So I put a different shoe on each foot of the three trail runners that I tested. And then I fast hike up this hill that's basically dirt and loose debris. And I detected no difference between these shoes and the other two shoes. So they all provide superior traction. Mega grip, again, with this lug pattern works very, very well on the Hoka Speed Goat 5. Protection, there is no rock plate, but hey, if you have a 33 millimeter stack in the heel and a 29 millimeter stack in the forefoot, you don't really need protection. These shoes provided superior protection, all those different services, including sharp rocks, stone, um, roots. I never had any issues with any bruising to the bottom of my foot in these shoes over the 85 miles or any of the testing that I did. I also do head to head testing where I put a different shoe on each foot and then I step on a stone and these shoes tied for first beating a different shoe. They 
essentially just absorb whatever it is that you're stepping on on the trail. So if protection is important for you, these shoes are definitely gonna do that. In my estimation and hiking and testing these shoes, the Hoka Speed Goat 5 provide superior protection. I also occasionally stub my toe over the 85 miles and they do have a toe cap and I had zero issues with any damage to my toes or to the top of my feet in these shoes. Another test that I did uh, with the three trail running shoes was testing them for time to dry. I essentially take the dry weight, I dunk the shoes in water, shake out the excess water, and then weigh them again, looking at the percent weight increase over their dry weight. And then I weigh them every hour for nine hours. This shoe took on about 40% of its dry weight in water. And then over the course of the nine hours, it almost got back to its original weight. So if, you, if you're gonna be on a multi-day hike and you think you're gonna get wet, this is a shoe that could potentially dry out overnight while you're sleeping. Final thoughts. I put about 40 miles on these shoes so far, including the 85 mile through hike, plus testing and then just training hikes and things like that. These are great shoes. I think that a lot of people love these shoes and that plays out in the amount of these that I saw on the through hike. These shoes performed great for me in all of those different hiking scenarios. As I said before, these are essentially running shoes. They lack some of the features that you might find in a proper hiking shoe or um, a different trail running shoe that maybe has some more hiking shoe DNA built into it. Most notably for me, it does not have a stability system designed into it. And that together with the super thick stack, again, caused me to feel unstable in certain uh, situations. But it's, you know, it's up to you as the user. But I would not choose to take these on a hiking trip, especially if I was going to be wearing a backpack or a heavier backpack. I did have a backpack on. But again, I did not have any issues. I didn't turn my ankle in these. I was able to overcome those moments when I felt like the shoe was kind of slipping out from underneath me. The Hoka Speed Goat 5 is super lightweight. It's very cushioned and it's amazing for downhilling. I would put a lot of my weight on the heel as I was downhilling and this shoe did a lot of work for me, especially on that last day where I hiked the last 10 miles of a 25 mile leg all downhill because I came off the mountains and then wound up in Florence. So this shoe performed very well in that situation. I have a preferred trail runner for hiking and it's not this shoe. If you want to find out what that shoe is, go check out the video on my channel, best trail running shoes for hiking. And I will see you guys in that video.